Hello, good day. Uh, today I'm going to tell you uh, about uh, IEC 61499 standard, uh, giving a short introduction based on examples. So my purpose is to um, just give you a feeling of what uh, is this technology about. So take a look at this uh, model of a flexible assembly line that has a variable uh, layout and uh, is uh, automated using IC61499 uh, running one program on a network of 10 controllers. So this production line uh, demonstrates the concept of uh, producing to order kind of lot size one production uh, where on the same same production line you can produce different products dependent on the order. So the control system of it uh, consists of uh, small control devices, we call nano-PLCs, nano that communicate uh, wirelessly to each other and that implement a kind of multi-agent uh, automation logic. So uh, IEC 61499.9 uh, enables us to write one control program that will be running on this network of uh, such devices. So, how do we start programming with IC 61499? Um, suppose that we already have a library of function blocks that represent basic uh, automation services of uh, basic mechatronic components such as conveyor belts or um, mobile this mobile gadget uh, on the right hand side or pick and place uh, manipulators uh, and we just uh, fetch them from a library of function blocks and put on the design space so then uh, we add some control logic also in the form of function blocks uh, that uh, implements more complicated services for processing order for example or for scheduling uh, components in a given sequence. So after that we add uh, function blocks that contain product description. So these uh, blocks are programmed using language of state machines and uh, with that graphically we can uh, represent the required sequence of operations for a given product. And finally we connect all the services we orchestrate them by connecting one to another and now the entire application is ready to be executed on our distributed control infrastructure. So uh, with this approach we implemented a service-oriented stack of layered services uh, where on the left hand side we have high-level services that describe product on the um, right hand side we have uh, low level services that correspond to basic operations of on and off certain uh, basic mechatronic unit. So now the next step in uh, the, the development of, of the system is to deploy uh, function blocks to the devices that are connected to actual sensors and actuators. So uh, for that it's very simple. We just need to decide which function block uh, where does it need to leave um, and then we tell in the software tool so we create this description of our systems hardware architecture and with that we uh, define that this function block will be located in that uh, hardware device okay so um, more complicated example uh, with more details of, of the design so let's take a look at this elevator case. So it's a real elevator that operates across three floors. And uh, usually such systems are uh, automated using programmable logic controllers where one PLC is connected to all sensors and actuators of the system. But we have good reasons to do that in a distributed way. So. So let's remember how we do usually design of control systems. Uh, control systems consist of a plant and of a controller. So we draw a block diagram and in that block diagram we connect plant and controller. From plant we have sensor readings 
that go to the controller and from the controller uh, we have control signals that uh, go to the plant so that's uh, uh, just a very basic and very classic way of uh, describing control systems in 6.14.9.9 we follow exactly the same approach on the top level of our application we can represent it as two blocks one corresponding to the plant and the other corresponding to the controller exactly like in our block abstract block diagram so but uh, in the distributed uh, architecture for elevator we could have uh, up to five devices where one control device will be sitting in the cabin and reading uh, button presses inside the cabin uh, three more devices will be located at each floor and one more at the motor that uh, moves the cabin up and down okay so uh, the overall architecture of our system uh, could look like this for at every floor we will have floor controller and these three floor controllers will be receiving uh, pressing of the button signal and uh, will be deciding among each other in collaboration to which floor uh, the cabin needs to be moved so once they agreed they can tell the motor and the motor will perform this operation so in 61499 function blocks uh, the structure of the application is exactly the same we have three function blocks corresponding to each floor so we call them floor nodes so three identical blocks uh, three instances of identical blocks and then we have a uh, motor control called move elevator so that's exactly following our uh, topology described before so we have floor nodes communicating with each other and negotiating and then telling the motor where to move okay and the overall application uh, structure is hierarchical on the top level we have these four blocks connected to each other and then each of the floor nodes actually is another network of function blocks so floor node is a network of function blocks uh, then uh, we have inside the floor node uh, we will have two components uh, one responsible for door control and another responsible for uh, taking call signals and they will be um, together connected to the component responsible for negotiation with other floor nodes and so on and so forth in the bottom level we have blocks that are described using state machines such as basic door control and the move elevator that is located on the top level of our application but is also a basic function block described uh, via state machine so one single floor node what it is it has a function of receiving button calls it has a function of operating with the doors at that floor and also a function of negotiating with other floor nodes so this can be represented as these three circles on screen inside the floor two node and exactly the same will be a structure of function block application so one function block um, connected to uh, buttons uh, another block uh, receiving signals from a uh, door and uh, then the mutex node that is doing negotiation so in this way okay and the mutex block is again another composite block which means that the block defined as a network of other function blocks in the center there is a mutex block that contains the key key logic of uh, mutual exclusive access uh, to the motor while those blocks subscribe and publish on the right and left hand side so these actually implement message passing via UDP protocol and this is a mechanism how two floor nodes can communicate with each other so inside this mutex function block is a basic block that implemented as a state machine so it has an interface and on the right hand side state machine that defines its logic of um, negotiation about mutually exclusive access individually um, exclusive access to uh, the motor signals all right and um, that's all
we completed our application. So we started from the top level of block diagram. This block diagram is defined as a composite block a network of four main function blocks. Then we need to tell in which device each of those blocks will be running. So we define it by defining the mapping. We tell that 614.99 system uh, to deploy each block in the corresponding device. Press the button and our elevator will move. Okay, to conclude, 614.99, it is a kind of programming language, but for distributed automation systems where one single program runs on a network of devices. Second, 614.99 is built from components, control program is built from components called function blocks. So function blocks can be basic, uh, where the block is defined as a state machine, can be composite, where block is defined as a network of other fun function blocks, and can be a service interface, uh, where service interface function blocks are usually provided by vendors of devices, and application developer just uses them from the library without seeing what is inside. So they are usually written in some other way, not uh, approachable by um, application developer. There are also uh, artifacts uh, that are called sub-applications. Um, these sub-applications look like composite function blocks, so they defined again as a network of function blocks, but content of this sub-applications can be distributed across different devices. So that is um, uh, four basic artifacts of uh, this programming language. And uh, finally, you need to remember that function blocks are activated only by events. So events are special type of signals that tell the function block uh, to run and one function block upon execution can emit other events and this way uh, can activate other function blocks in the application. And with this knowledge, you can start exploring function block tools and function block examples. Thank you for your attention.